Minutian fires back, saying, My package is perfectly big enough, and stop trying to put strings on my package. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is LLA with incredible bombshell news today about Second Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package. This is afternoon's LLA. And wow, all our reporting for over two weeks was confirmed today, not once, but three times. Afternoon's LLA is our two-hour programming block that starts every day with the check. This is a video. Then goes to Hazard Pay. Then FPUC and finally Rent Assistance. Incredible, great news that requires you to really hit that like button because you're going to really like this video and subscribe as also. Um, the day started out with Mark Meadows confirming this channel's reporting for nearly two days about absolutely everything from when you'll get the second stimulus check, when the package will be approved, to how it'll get approved, to the issue about the state bailouts and why it's an overcompensation being presented by the Temple of Doom. It's changed even more over with incredible more great news. Minutes ago, S.D. Mnuchin appeared before the House subcommittee and slammed um, the Temple of Doom in his own Indiana Jones moment, saying that her numbers are unjustified. And then Maxine Waters from California came in and took another firing aim at everyone involved. Boy, congratulations. No one thought that we would get to this point, but all the reporting that I've been giving to you has been now confirmed. Let's get right to the details. First, this channel reported uh, over two days ago that what's going to happen in the second stimulus package approval is it's going to go to the Senate and that Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats have been quietly talking to get this done without the Temple of Doom involved. That was confirmed by Mark Meadows this morning. Next, the stimulus package that Mnuchin and Meadows are going to introduce to the Senate by way of Mitch McConnell, also reported first on this channel, will be a package that includes your stimulus checks, FPUC extension, eviction moratorium, a school A K-12, K-12, and maybe some money for airlines. And potentially that's it for the first round, but they'll come back and do the more complicated things as the next round. This is incredibly great news. Let me get, and I'll get more to the amount of the checks and the manner of delivery in a second. A third, this will be introduced as a Senate bill next week. It is not the Heels Act. It's not the skinny bill. It's a totally new bill. That was also reported first on this channel yesterday. Um, additionally, there is another twist. <laughs> House Democrats are behind the move. Boy, this is incredibly great news. Now, Steve Mnuchin appeared on a House subcommittee minutes ago and said, you know, no one's going to tell me how to negotiate. No one's going to tell me how to do things. And I'm perfectly fine to go to the Temple of Doom, whether or not I'm with Indiana Jones or not. But you can't tell me what strings have to be attached to my package. <laughs> and finally, minutes ago, Nancy Maxine Waters, you know, originally from St. Louis, now in California, came out. And I can't reenact it, but let's just say she was screaming through the camera. <laughs> She said, get your effing asses back to the negotiation table and get this friggin' done. You are paid to work, not paid to say don't come to the table unless. You wonder who she's referring to? All right, let's get to the incredible great details. You're going to get a second stimulus check. The stimulus check will be $1,200, $2,400 if you're a married couple. The issue of dependence certainly is not yet flushed out in these reports from Mnuchin's and Meadows, but it's likely that the dependents will get a full check, $1,200 for dependents. Um, that's whether you're an adult dependent or a minor dependent. This is incredibly great news because in the first stimulus package, you didn't get a check if you're an adult dependent. Especially under the first stimulus package, if you're on SSDI, SSI, Social Security, or Railroad Benefits, and you are a dependent, you didn't get a check the first time around. Not fair. This time, you're getting a check. The issue stems from the 
the determination of some viewers simply to just appear on their son or daughter's tax return as a dependent and not a file as a single, as an individual themselves. By appearing as a dependent on people's tax returns, you did not get a first stimulus check because that's the way the first stimulus package was written. This time around, you'll get one. The check will not likely get taken for child support if it mirrors the Democrats' version. Uh, the Republicans' initial version said it would get taken for child support. Let me tell you two things you need to think about as we're going into next week on the stimulus check. One, this will be a Republican-drafted bill. So Republicans initially said for $500 for dependents. They may stay with that because, remember, this is a whole new path and a whole new ballgame. Second, they may have in there, it's taken out for child support. Third, and this is what's so important because I can just see the comments coming next week. I can just see them coming. Meadows made very clear, and please listen to me clearly with this. Meadows made very clear that the bill that's going to be introduced will be a starting point to get it done and make it revamped instantly within a matter of hours if not you know a matter of minutes by negotiations so if you see something in the initial production of the bill let's say it's five hundred dollars for dependents don't panic don't panic because he said we got to start with something now what's in the bill meadows talks about a 500 billion dollar bill and the 500 dollar billion dollar bill he talks about his exact words are stimulus checks fpc extension which I'm reporting now is likely to be about $400. It's not going to be $600. It may be $500, but it's more likely $400. Retroactive back to the state at which FPUC expired and would cover the difference of LWA, would not have that $100 uh, minimum balance. Very, very clear. Great news. Um, uh, rent eviction, moratorium and mortgage forbearance moratorium, which is not the same as rent A. That's something different. K to 12, and maybe something for airlines, and maybe one other thing like liability protection. That's that package. Um, this is incredibly great news. Why next week and not today or tomorrow? I got that comment a lot this morning. The reason why is they're not in session. The Senate comes back into session next week and the House shortly thereafter. And so it is literally a rush to the finish line to get this done very, very fast. That is the first reason. The second reason why it's not being done today is, is that because it can't be introduced as a vote because no one's on the, on the Senate floor. Third, the fact that they're not open doesn't mean that Meadows is not working. I'm going to go over the details in a second. He basically explains he has been negotiating with Democrats in the Senate and Republicans in the Senate for weeks, quietly. I mean, this is incredibly great news. So the fact that you don't see him doing something in front of you doesn't mean it's not happening. He's working on it, but the vote can't happen until next week. Next, a couple of viewers said, well, I've been, I've been waiting before and I've waited here. Understand, that's the Temple of Doom. The Temple of Doom is no longer involved in this. She is now irrelevant, and I'll explain to you why. It'll go to the Senate, it'll get approval in the Senate, it'll come back to the House, it does not need to visit the Temple of Doom. Uh, that is not on the, um, the, um, the celebrity tour map. <laughs> it's gonna just, you know, take, take a different cul-de-sac uh, and not stop on that one. You know, that's a dead end cul-de-sac with a lot of bats in the end of the, at, at the end of the street. And we'll just go down a different cul-de-sac and get a vote there in the House and then become a law. Now, that will be that bill. It won't, it may be, it will then be supplemented by another round of bill that'll have what's called more complicated stuff in there. Qualifier or disclaimer. Meadows certainly talked about another way to possibly do this, which is do a $1.3 trillion bill next week to get everything done. But in his discussions, it certainly made clear that he thinks that's not a great process and you don't want that process. You absolutely don't want that process because that would basically hold up your checks again because they're doing the stuff that he says is more takes more time to negotiate. So this is incredibly, incredibly great news. And this is exactly what only this channel was reporting. No one else, whether it's broadcast news reporters, print news reporters, or other channels, no one was reporting to you that this is going to happen 
four days ago. I've been reporting it every single day. I had a special on it last night, a special on it the night before, which was very popular. Watch, thank you for tuning in. So this is why I tell you stuff before it happens, as some, team, some people will say, um, just tell me when it lands in my account. No, I'm gonna tell you the stuff before it lands in your account. That's the purpose of the Purple Power. All right, let's get to his incredible details. First, he said, that what was going on with um, the Temple of Tomb was that she was coming up with a, with a certain amount of money allocated for this program, but then he couldn't. She couldn't explain what is built upon. Is it built upon facts? Is it built upon the cost of each program? He would ask what the cost of each program allocation she wanted is line item. You know, like a bid. What is line one? Was like. Temple Doom had no answers. Just give me 2.3 or else. What? That's not an answer. Just give me 2.3 or else or don't come back. She wasn't giving answers. We had discussions with the Democrats. I love this. This is Meadows talking. We had discussions with the Democrats and we continue to have discussions with Republican senators. So he's talking to both Republicans and Democratic senators over the last couple of days. We're making progress. We're looking at the, at the, t at, um, the amount of things we're agreeing upon for state and local. All right. Now this this is the big one. Oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> State and local. Let me explain what's going on. States like New York had fiscal overrun over the last few years. They were spending money like it was running out of water. Spending, spending, spending. COVID hit and then what happened was states did not get revenue if businesses were shut down. So now they have a financial gap. What's on top of that, and I did not cover this this morning, I've never covered this before, and this came from an incredible report um, from Richard Ravitch, who was singularly one of the most important people to save New York in the 1970s when they did another similar problem. What's happening now is he said they've absolutely spent um, taking debt, 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 and spent, 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 assuming they were always going to have revenue. That problem happened way before COVID-19. Now, he says, they can't meet their debt obligations. And what's looming for states like New York is that borrowers of say, banks are saying, hey, we're not going to give you, we're not going to carry your debt. You have big problems. It's for that that has nothing to do with COVID-19 that the Temple of Doom wants a bailout of free grant money not to cover COVID-19 issues, but to cover pre-existing financial uh, run amok in a state and to give them grant money for two years. Yes, free money for two years that has nothing to do with COVID-19. So what Manette Meadows said in this morning's uh, interview was that, hey, you know, there's been a lot of reports, and as I've done the reports as well. Maybe he's a watcher of the channel, you think? Uh, that the amount of overrun, the amount of uh, budget constraints that states need to have to make their budget uh, to make their budgets this month, this this fall, is about three hundred billion. He said there's been a lot of third party data that says it's three hundred billion. I reported it by Moody's Analytics. It's about three hundred billion. Well, the Temple of Doom wants nine hundred and fifteen billion dollars, three hundred percent more than what's needed. Why? Because she wants to bail them out for two years. Not going to happen. It will never, ever, ever happen. And I got to tell you why. Because finally. Finally, so many people in America understand that her numbers were based upon, you know, like a circus act. I mean, it was, it was absolutely a circus act. And you're becoming homeless because she wants to bail out a state that didn't make, t didn't take care of their funding for, for several years and wants to give them free money for three years. How dare her? Really awful. All right, so let's get to back to some great news and ignore her stupid stuff. Um, Minutia is looking at the facts, and we do need to give a provide stability to state and local. We'll get three hundred billion dollars. That will cover their loss, and they'll be fine. Very clear. He has three hundred billion dollars in this proposal. We'll um, we're going to produce it to the Democrats on the Hill, um, into the House. We've had real discussions at behind closed doors. This okay. So what's going to happen next week? Is you're likely not to see anything about state and local you're going that state and local is the 1.3 trillion dollar bill so you're likely to see this in two stages a 500 billion dollar bill and then a 600 dollar bill 600 billion dollar bill right after that to deal with stuff that has nothing to do with you it's like as i always said behind me the stuff behind you will come second hallelujah i mean this is just incredible great day of great news the senate is looking at maybe a 500 dollar bill and from that we can use the foundation and we'll agree upon the things that we agree upon the targeted programs we'll sign into law and we'll get things done 
done and we'll have them agreed upon the parties. Um, he's talking about a one week turnaround to get this into law. Now understand, I'm reporting his words. These aren't my words. I'm not on the Hill. I'm not voting on your bill. I'm not drafting the bill. I'm not introduced into legislation. I'm not raising my hand to vote on it. So when people say, well, you said no, I'm reporting what Mark Meadows is saying, but it's rampant. It's just not one person who's now saying it. A one week turnaround. Uh, the vast majority of the negotiations have been look have been looking at the needs, and so the new bill that's coming up next week will be small businesses, uh, stimulus checks, K to twelve supplements, enhanced unemployment benefits, and maybe something for airlines. Really incredible. He says this broad stroke agreement on this for Republicans and Democrats. Leader McConnell started with a one trillion dollar bill, and we're actually about three hundred billion now, but we are not going to two point two trillion. Uh, this is incredible. He says, we're working late into the night with negotiations. We've done this before and we're going to do it again. And as to executive orders, he says executive orders could loom and could strike if um, anyone tries to get in his way. I love this. I'm so excited for you. I mean, it's just finally. It really, really is finally. Um, <laughs> Uh, Steve Mnuchin, who's generally a calm guy, he's a numbers guy, a little nerdy, you know. Um, he was on the he was on the hill today, being asked about what's going on with the Temple of Doom, and he said, um, "I will call her to personally negotiate with her, but I am not going to have someone tell me that has that my package has strings attached to it." <laughs> Uh, as you don't recall, the Temple of Doom said, "Don't come back to me unless you bring me exactly 2.4 million trillion. Otherwise, don't don't knock on my door." Okay, well, no one's gonna knock on your door, huh? <laughs> we're gonna go to the door next door and the Senate door, and we're gonna get done without you. But he said, "There's more work to be done. Let's not get caught on the letters. Let's get forward on bipartisan support, and we can agree upon this areas that we need more work, which mirrors what Meadows is saying." We can agree upon stimulus checks, FPUC, uh, eviction moratorium, airlines, k testing, K-12 to schools. We can agree upon that, get that money out, $500 billion, and then we'll get to the other stuff. Of course, you know, the Temple of Doom's response was, no, you know, with, the, with a little bit of fire to it. Uh, There's some dragons behind her when she issued her press release. Uh, and they said, she said, no, give me 2.4 or else. <laughs> Every time I say or else, I feel like I'm in a very bad Power Rangers episode where the villain's like, you know, you must do this or else. Or else. It's just, I mean, that's literally what she does. That and the children going hungry. Children going hungry or else. <laughs> uh, now, Maxine Waters, God bless her. I just, you know, if anyone's going to to ruffle from some feathers, whether they're, you know, faux feathers or real feathers, she's the one that's going to do it. She sat there on her Zoom chat or Skype or whatever it was, and she's like leaning into the camera, awkwardly too close to the camera, waving her finger, you know, <laughs> she just said, get back to negotiations to the table. Let's stabilize this economy. This is your job to be working. L tell her that I, t she said to Manusha, she said, Tell Nancy that I told you you're to call her and she's to answer the phone and talk to you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there was a call to action to tell uh, the Temple of Doom, you know, you need to open your doors and let some light in and staying in the darkness is really not a good look for you. You know, it's just not, not a good look for you. Uh, really incredible, great key news. Finally, Richard Ravitch, um, who oversaw the financial bailout of the 1970s in New York, says that's really what's going on is these states borrow too much money. They took on too much debt. They're not going to be able to meet their loan obligations. They can't foreclose. They can't, excuse me, they can't file for bankruptcy because states under the Constitution can't file for bankruptcy. State Cities can if they're given authorization. And so what's happening is basically the cities will have to cut um, programs, cut services because they spent too much money. As viewers of this channel have said, and I'm saying as well, tough luck. <laughs> tough luck. You lived the high life all those years, spending, 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 borrowing, borrowing, thinking that everything was going to always be beautiful and happy. Well, now is not your time to be taking our relief. You can get behind us.
thank you. Uh, <laughs> there you go. So what should you expect? How should you expect and what's coming up next? What you should expect is the following. One, you should only stay with the Purple Power because really, there's a lot of incorrect stuff out there, and there's a lot of strange paths that are happening. This path to start in the Senate, move around in the Senate, be introduced by Mitch McConnell, is something totally different than we had heard, you know, no less than a week ago. I was the first one to break this incredible news. And certainly when you hear it, it can cause some confusion. You say, well, is the Temple of Doom relevant anymore? No. Um, but I thought Mitch had a skinny bill that did this and that. Ignore that. Well, is he going to have a different version of the bill? Yes. I heard the bill. Ignore that. This is going to be one of those times where you absolutely have to sort of... Um, ignore prior activities that are even three days ago because things are changing so incredibly fast. I'm here to get you your money. I'm here to ensure you have the news. I'm here to ensure you have the correct information. So do me a couple favors. First, go to the Fronts channel and hit that subscribe button. Uh, boy, I think we're gonna hit 230 today. 230. Our goal is to reach 250. Let's try to add about 5,000 subscribers per day. Let's try to do that. 250 in the next two weeks. Hit that subscribe and alert button and so you're going to look when something goes live. I'm, I'm updating things in the channel. So you'll get an alert in the channel. Um, a couple of things you should be looking for when you have your name in the comments. First, there should be a little red button next to it. That indicates that you're a subscriber. Two, if you see some viewers like Jennifer, Atona, that have a blue next to their name, that means they're a top commentator. That means they comment a lot and I've liked their comments. So try to see if you can become a top commentator. Additionally, I'll be adding new emojis in the next couple of days so get ready for that that'll be fun so you you can be rewarded for your comments or commute and you're part of the community thank you for always being a part of this community next like this video this is a video that should have 10,000 likes this is a video that should go higher in the rankings this is a video that's ripe with a lot of information and what I'm trying to do is ensure that you get the correct information and other viewers also as well that might be new to this channel this video needs to go higher in the rankings than other channels that are basically telling you a lot of hogwash and it's not it's unfortunate that times like like this where it's so emotion informationally dense and a day that's very busy that the correct information gets out as soon as possible. Coming up next is hazard pay, uh, then FPUC, and finally rent as, as this at, right after that. And then evenings to LA, starting at 6.45, which really has been a blockbuster. Thank you for tuning into that in record numbers. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, stay focused. Congratulations, and stay at LA for more.